How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a very important discussion. That's not very good, is it? Those tricks and those kind of tricks are a disgrace to magic. So, not too long ago, a magician called Daniel Madison, who you might have heard of, released a video talking about gaff cards and the way that they should and shouldn't be used. And Daniel Madison has never been too secretive about his opinions on magic, which is something that I really, really respect. And in this video, he goes so far as to say that some of these tricks are a disgrace to magic, which is a really fascinating opinion. And in this video, I want to share my thoughts on this topic and open up the conversation. This is something that every magician should be thinking about, so make sure to leave your comments down below and let's dive into this. This right here is a gaff playing card. It's something that I printed in my most recent deck of cards, and rather fittingly for this video, it's actually based on a Daniel Madison trick. This is angle Z, or angle zero, or whatever you want to call it. In this trick, you tear a corner off the seven of hearts and melt it onto the jack of clubs, in this case, and leave them with an impossible object. I love this trick. I think it's absolutely brilliant, and it's something I perform quite often. Clearly, Daniel Madison doesn't think this trick is a disgrace to magic, so which tricks does he take issue with? Well, in his video, he gives a couple of examples, one of them being the trick with the four of spades, where you drag the pips to the corner. I've never owned one of those tricks, I've never performed it, but I've seen it done hundreds of times because a few years ago that trick was everywhere. And another one he gives is like the Ten of Diamonds one where you shake it and the pips fall to the bottom. Those, he says, are offensive to his magic manifesto and how are the audience supposed to believe that magic is real when people are doing things like that? Are audiences actually expected to believe that the magician has made that happen? Well, this is actually something I've spoken about before. If you remember, there was a deck of cards called the BOD deck of cards. And in that, there was a gaff card that was like two cards sort of printed on top of each other, like a merged playing card. So the effect was you take two cards, you press them together, and they form this weird sort of misprinted card. And I didn't like that trick. I liked the deck, but I didn't like the trick because how are the audience actually going to think that I've made this happen, right? If we're thinking just like a spectator, what are they going to think when they see that merged card? Well, the easiest conclusion to jump to is that the card has been printed that way, that it's just a specially printed card. They might not understand the sleight of hand or the switch or whatever mechanics of the trick, they might not understand any of that, but that doesn't matter if their first conclusion that they jump to is that it's a specially printed card. And they're right. It is a specially printed card. So I didn't want to perform that trick because it could too easily be explained with a method that is pretty much the method of the trick. But I still think that there's a place for gaff cards like that, it's just about how the magician uses it. So in my video where I spoke about this gaff, I gave the example of rather than starting with two separate cards and turning them into one, how about you start with the gaff card, show it to them, and explain that it's a misprinted card. You just show them straight up at the start of the trick, here's a funny looking card, and then you perform a trick with it, then you turn it into two cards. At least then the trick can't be explained away with, oh, it was a specially printed card because you're openly admitting that at the start of the trick and then you're doing magic. I think that's a better way around of doing it. So I still like gaff cards like that. It's just about changing up how you use them. As magicians, it's very easy to overthink a magic trick. And I'm sure we've all been guilty of that. Just worrying whether or not it will fool an audience. But actually, I think there's another risk here. And that's underthinking a magic trick. Just expecting that no matter what you do, because it's impossible, it will fool the audience. Now, let's break down the actual effects then of both of these tricks, of this angle Z trick, and we'll use the four of spades trick as well as an example. What is the actual effect? Stripping it down to its bare bones, what happens? Well, in this trick, you take a card, you change it somehow permanently, and leave them with an impossible object. But you can also say the same thing about the Four of Spades trick. It's really weird. You take the card, you change it permanently, you leave them with an impossible object. So what's going on here? Why is one so much better in so many magicians' opinions than the other if actually the effect isn't that different? To them, there's no way that this trick can just be explained away with, oh, it was a specially printed card. 
Because to them, how could it have been prepared beforehand? How could this have been printed in this way? They see me tear the corner. They see that exact corner melt on and the tears line up. It just can't be explained that simply. Whereas the moving pips trick can. And also, it's happening in three dimensions, you know? Like, this is tearing from one card and, and placing here, whereas the moving pips is just happening in a 2D plane. I think moving pips in a sort of predetermined way is far less impressive than actually having a physical object melt into a card. But here's where things get really interesting, because you might be watching this video and thinking that actually you prefer the Four of Spades trick. That's just more your style and you don't particularly like this trick. And guess what? That is absolutely fine. That opinion is absolutely valid. I don't agree with everything Daniel Madison says or shows in that video. There are some of the gaffes that he demonstrates in his video that I just look at and think, well, I'm not going to perform that. that. That doesn't really seem any better than the Four of Spades trick to me. Just because I have a different opinion to Daniel Madison doesn't mean I respect him as a performer any less. Of course not. I think he's great. And the fact that different magicians can have different opinions, to me, is incredible. It's one of the reasons that I absolutely love magic. Different magicians having different performance styles, to me, is beautiful. And I think it will really advance the art form. Which sort of brings me on quite nicely to another thing I want to just briefly talk about, which is the Magic Manifesto, which is Daniel Madison's set of rules that he's written to advance magic towards being an art form. Now, I'm a firm believer that every magician that goes out and performs is a representative of magic. And by that I mean, when you perform, your audience aren't just creating an opinion of you, they're making an opinion of all of magic, and magicians in general, whenever you perform. So when you perform, you should do it to the fullest, and do your best material, and do magic justice. But most importantly, perform in your own style and with your own rules. If you disagree with the Magic Manifesto, that doesn't make you a bad magician. Of course not. You can be yourself. You can be original. You can write your own version of the Magic Manifesto if you want to. Every magician's opinion on how they want to perform is a very personal choice, and those opinions are absolutely valid. Likewise, of course, if you read the manifesto and you're like, hell yes, I am on board for that, I agree 100% Madison, then feel free to adopt it as your own, of course. I think the Magic Manifesto was written with really good intentions. Madison clearly wants to evolve the art form of magic and make it into an art form, which are all things that I 100% agree with. Again, mad love, mad respect to Daniel Madison, as he would say. Uh, I really respect the mission he's on. Just for me, personally, a manifesto isn't quite the way of going about it, for me, personally. Uh, but there we go, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this one, the first video from the new house, the new setup. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this, and your comments and thoughts are always appreciated on this topic. As always, I'll try and reply to as many as possible. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe as well if you made it to this point, and I'll see you in the next video.